Hello to my Tinkers 1.16 uh, guide. Uh, specifically, the main important parts of this will be covering the new foundry uh, and some uh, modifiers. So first off, what you need to know about Tinkers Construct is you'll need clay, sand, and gravel to make a substance called grout. Grout is used to make seared bricks which can be uh, cooked in a blast furnace furnace or something called a smeltery. Um, these seared bricks can be used to make things like this, a faucet, a channel. Uh, they can be turned into bricks like you would with normal bricks and make stairs and slabs. You can also make a uh, casting basin and table as well as important things for a mini smeltery. Um, a heater and a melter which is made with a seared fuel gauge which is made like this. Now you can also uh, use a fuel tank, one of these, which you put lava buckets into and it acts as a heater. Now, if you wanted to make uh, a smeltery like this, you would take a seared heater, uh, put four copper in here. For example, you take four copper, put them in there, uh, cook them up and then put a seared heater in there right click on the faucet and then it should give you the smeltery controller like so now when making a smeltery you'll want a seared drain, smeltery controller, and the fuel gauge as before, and you can either fill it with blazing blood or a lava bucket. The materials you can make a smeltery with are all of these, and this is the minimum size for a tinker smeltery. Just this big, no blocks on the side necessary. Um, with one of these, you can also make some aesthetic blocks, such as clear glass that works like this, and soul glass, which is made from soul sand and soul soil, similar, and is made in a similar fashion to how clear glass is made, where you put sand in the uh, melter and then provide a fuel source in the back. Uh, and then cast it into a basin. You can also make mud bricks by pouring water onto it. You can make uh, lava wood by pouring lava onto the wood. And uh, those are some of the static blocks you can make with a smeltery. When it comes to uh, tool making things, you'll probably want a crafting station which holds items in it. You'll want a tinker station, a part builder, modifier chest, and a part chest. Now, over here, you can use all of these together to make tools. For a part builder, you put in patterns, which are made like this, two wood, a stick, and a type of uh, material. Now, you can use things like wood, stone, uh, Pretty much a lot of basic things. You can use bone, uh, slime gems, all like there's a bunch of stuff you can do. And you pick a part over here and it will use a pattern and whatever the material cost is. So this costs two, so I'll take two cobblestone. And if I wanted a repair kit, it costs two. A large plate costs four and like a tool binding costs one. Now when making tools, you put them in, where do you put them? 
Here they are. You put it in a tinker station. So you'd find whatever tool you want to make. And they all have different attributes. And then you'd make these components out of whatever material you want. And then just put them in these grids and you should get your tool. Now, there's uh, ways to use the smeltery to use more durable parts than just wood and stone bone, but I'll get into that after I've explained some uh, more advanced ways to use the smeltery. Over here is a basic setup you'll see in probably a, a normal smeltery. You get the sear so drain and a faucet, and you put it in either a cat. Uh, a basin or a table now with tables what you can do is you can get um, where is it you can get casts and you can make them out of red sand uh, normal sand or gold I'll explain the gold part but for a normal cast what you would do is you would put it in here and then like say you want an ingot cast for just a one time use you would put the material in there by right clicking right click to take it out and you'll have your sand ingot cast now assuming I would put in metal or some other sort of object in here um, it would melt if I had fuel like I do and then it would go into the capacity. Now the capacity of a smeltery this big is 288. And basically this is fairly small, but it won't use up as much fuel as, because if I get a larger smeltery, it'll use up more fuel. So just keep that in mind. And then I would right click the faucet and the cast will be consumed, but I'll get my iron nugget or any other metal. I can also use uh, this with conjunction to a sear channel. I can put that into an ingot tank and that can hold three and a half blocks. You make ingot tanks like this and they're useful if you want to hold uh, relatively decent amounts of metal. What you can also do is you can get a seared duck and a copper can and say I wanted to specifically only get like iron uh, out of this I would put an ingot of iron into the copper can and then put it into the duct after I did that I would be able to uh, only get that even if I have other substances in the smeltery once I right clicked it or provided a redstone output or a redstone signal on the top where it would continuously pour. Um, over here you get into another type of melting mechanic in Tinker's Construct uh, and that's the foundry. The foundry uh, materials like the things you use to make the foundry I'll start with nether grout, which is made like this. Or simply by putting magma cream in one of these, uh, gravel or basalt in this, and then right clicking uh, to get scorched stone. If you wanted polished scorched stone, you put it in a 4x4 grid. Or alternatively, you could take the nether grout, um, make scorch bricks by putting it into a furnace, smeltery, a foundry, the thing you're about to make, or a uh, blast furnace. And then you like the then like the then like the seared bricks you combine them in a 4x4 four four grid to make scorch bricks. And as with the other seared bricks, scorch bricks can be used in many different similar ways. The only exceptions really being 
you need obsidian panes, which are made from molten obsidian, onto a casting table, and you would get an obsidian pane. Uh, a semi-similar method to making the foundry controller is by using a basic alloying machine, which use scorched fuel tanks and a scorched alloyer, which is made like this, and then pouring it onto scorched brick, uh, you're pouring obsidian onto scorched brick to get a foundry controller. You can also, uh, you also have to keep in mind when you're making one of these, a foundry, you can use all of these types of uh, things in it and it will still work. And it's recommended at this point you get blazing blood. Now, blazing blood is made by taking blazes and putting it into a smeltery. Now, for this example, I couldn't get the spawner to work, so I just attached a dispenser that will dispense a blaze. At least it should. I don't know why it won't. Whatever. Oh wait, hold on. There we go. Alright. So you want blazing blood, which is made by putting a blaze into a smeltery. Normally you'd use like a spawner from the nether and then deposit it into the smeltery. The smeltery then would give you blazing blood and you can use a system similar to this if you wanted using the previous mechanics I mentioned to uh, funnel it into the seared tanks. So you can just transfer it directly. Um, after you have this you're probably wondering what the foundry is used for. It's used mainly for getting byproducts. So say I put ancient debris, I would get one ingot, so one scrap, six uh, nuggets of that scrap, and diamond as a byproduct. Now that's useful if you just want uh, to do large bulks of things and don't really care about the specific product. Uh, when making a foundry, the bare minimum is you have to have it surrounded by all sides. You can have no missing gaps in the corners, and the bottom has to be full, or else it won't work. So this is the smallest foundry within reason. Over here, uh, foundries can be used in conjunction to villagers with toolsmiths or armorers to get infinite diamonds via emeralds. Now if I were to sell this armorer uh, lava buckets, for example, for one emerald, and then use those emeralds to buy diamond gear, what I could do is I could put the diamond gear in the foundry, it would melt down, give me a gem. And then I could turn those gems from uh, from just the liquid form to diamonds or diamond blocks and it would almost give me like uh, for how many diamonds it would normally take me to create those uh, that gear say for like boots I would get four diamonds out of it that way you can mass reduce diamonds if you so wished it's kind of game breaking I don't know if this is an intentional or thought out feature but it is something you can do as of now over here, um, more advanced materials that I covered in my last video. I'm not going to cover them again. They basically work the same. You put them in the smeltery and you should get what you want. You can make anvils uh, with bricks and tinker's bronze. You can also do this with scorched bricks, as you can see, like here. But that's it, it does the same thing. It, it allows you to make different tools with unique traits. Uh, over here, I'll 
show you how to make specific ingot casts. So say you want to reuse a cast over and over, it could be useful to have an ingot cast made of gold because it will never deteriorate. Now if you wanted to use these things, it's important to note that you have to put whatever you want, say like I want a repair kit cast, I would put it on here and then I would right click after this has gold in it. The object I put in there would go away and then I would get the repair cast. And then I can reuse that over and over. And for all of these, uh, it's the bottom, it's the item below it and that's how you get it. There are two important things that Tinker's adds that are used in various recipes and uh, tools. And ore wise and that's copper and cobalt cobalt is found in the nether it's another ore and it's just pretty much found anywhere you just gotta walk around it's like quartz almost and you have copper and copper is found in similar like capacity to iron maybe or yeah iron's just about right there also adds sky islands this one they all have different trees this one would be found in the nether this one's found in the overworld. Uh, no, this actually is from the end, my bad. This one's found near oceans, and this one's just found in the world. Um, there are different modifiers. Like, if you do this, it'll allow you to um, bucket, pick up liquids. Um, also, the materials that you make the tool out of, like this is just full iron, it gives you piercing and sturdy. So just keep that in mind, when you make tools, different materials you make them out of will have those modifiers. Um, and then here's just a couple of the things. I'm not gonna go over each one. Um, there's some useful ones like uh, luck, that is the equivalent to fortune, and you just add these around them and the final one is fortune three you have to add each one it's compacting so you do this one and then this one and then this one um there's things like reach um this is the equivalent of silk touch this adds a what does it add i believe it adds a Additional upgrade, yeah. And just if you go through it, there's various things. At the end, however, uh, there's useful tools. If you put any of the types of slimes you can get in the game now onto a campfire, you'll get something called Janatless Drops, and they allow you to do things like speed, jump boost, fire resistance, luck, or health boost. Uh, there's also slime slings, and they can be made out of various congealed slime and uh, string, as well as boots. Now, wearing boots and the sling will allow you to jump and then not take fall damage. It's very useful. Overall, I think that's the basics. If you enjoyed the video, please like and uh, subscribe, and I hope this was helpful.